Day Fret friends, we have a new guitar on the bench. It is a new guitar and it's a new client and this guitar has been sent to me from Cornwall and I'm going to show you what it is and it's a beautiful looking thing. It's an ESP E2 Eclipse guitar in, what's the finish called? Bought from Coda Music down in Stevenage in Kent. Uh, it is an ESP E2 Eclipse Blue Natural Fade. That looks to be like some kind of poplar burst on there. Set neck, um, beautiful looking thing. Ebony fingerboard, lovely smooth frets, nice binding, looks fantastic. Anodized kind of Cosmos black type pickup covers, ESP actives, nice battery compartment there. Is it a push in, pull out? Oh, it's a swivel thing, that's very good. That's very good, very nice, very good idea. And there you go. And it's just coming for its first setup. It's a new client, a guy messaged me quite a while ago. Saying he, like, he likes my work and he'd like me to work on his guitars and he bought this and he sent this straight up. This comes shipped. He got ripped up on the shipping. That's another video. Uh, hippie, herpes, hippies, uh, herpes, Hermes, sorry. Um, take that whichever way you like. Charged him something like 40 quid for next day delivery. Hermes do not insure musical instruments. So they ripped him off. Uh, that went through Parcel to Go. I never go through Parcel to Go. I go through, um, I use interparcel.com. And what I do is I don't ship with insurance, so I pick the cheapest option and I get my insurance from Securus, S-E-C-U-R-S-U-S dot -S -S com. It will cost you something like this, it will cost you about 16 quid to insure for £2,000. Guaranteed, as long as you wrap it right, send it in a hard case, they will fully insure you, they will pay out if anything goes wrong. So you heard that from me first. But anyway, yes, what a beautiful guitar. And I will be flabbergasted if it needed fret work, being a £2,000 guitar. It is just shy of £2,000, £1,989, this will cost you. Beautiful looking thing, and I'm going to set it up. I'm going to give it its first, I'm going to check the setup, and I'm going to alter anything that needs doing. I wouldn't have thought we need to change the strings or anything either. Um, but we'll have a look and see what we think, so I will come back with an update shortly. I've done what I said I'd do, and um, I've tightened the strings back up, got the setup back to how it was when the guitar came in, I've plugged it in and I've played it, and my goodness, this guitar sounds phenomenal. Now, I didn't go through my classic PV or my PV Classic 30 valve amp, which is fantastic. I absolutely love it. It's one of the best blues amps I've ever heard, best clean amps I've ever heard. But I plugged this straight into my uh, 6505, PV 6505 Mini over there, just on the one watt setting, a little overdrive boost in the front end, which you don't really need on the gain channel. And this sounds phenomenal. This is out and out a metal guitar for me. Uh, you can play any other style with it, not a problem, but guitars like this are built for metal. It sounds absolutely astounding. But that aside, we're moving on from there. So we're going to check the setup as it is, as the guitar came in. Again, should I say. Uh, just going to check scale length, 24 and 3 quarter inches, same as Gibson. I'm just going to look at the amount of relief in the neck, looks to be about right. Possibly a little bit straighter than I normally would have it, but that's not a problem because we're not down tuning, we're not using fat strings. So I've been looking for about 0.2 millimeters at the seventh fret. I've got the wrong feeler gauge. Oh, it's not wrong feeler gauge. It's a feeler gauge. I do have one that's quite easy to operate with this, but this one will do. It's the same, same kind of gubbins. So where are we? 0.05.0, 1.02. That'll be fine, that's where we we'll want it, the seventh fret. And we're just gonna get under the seventh fret and we're gonna feel a little bit, yeah, quite a bit less here, about 0.15 I would say. Do we have a 0.15? We do. So a little bit less relief than I would actually have myself. I'd go about 0.2. So we need a bit more relief in there. So the neck is set a little bit straight for me. I'm going to check the action at the 12th fret. Again, I'll be looking at 1.75 millimeters at 12th fret on the low E. It's standard, that's about 1.6. I'll be looking for about 1.5 on the top E. It's about 1.25. So the action is really low. Absolutely no buzz anywhere, which is fantastic, which means we can set a lovely low action. The guitar itself is set up really, really well out of the box. 
Now I imagine this is a standard factory setting. It is lower than I would set it myself. So I'm really, really impressed with how that is at the moment. We're now going to check the action at the first fret. That's the height of the strings above the first fret. And on this side, we're looking at about 0.3 mil gap. It's top of the fret to bottom of the string. And on this side, about 0.2. And again, I think it's going to be set up pretty well. So let me grab a 0.3. That's up superb on this guitar. I don't really need to do anything. It's under 0.3 on the bass side. Under 0.2 on the treble side. Again, doesn't need to be touched. Uh, regarding intonation, all I'm going to really have to do with this is restring it. I'm going to charge for a setup anyway, because it has come in for a setup and it's been sent a long way. Um, let me just grab a guitar lead. But it will be able to set up, I will be checking the frets. But, out of the box, so far, this is totally warranted. It's £1,900 asking price by actually being factory set up superbly. Slightly flat because it's laying down, but. flat on the G. So a couple of tiny bit flat, just need to move a couple of saddles ever so slightly. Don't need to touch the knot. Don't really need to do anything. What I am going to do is I'm going to take the strings off. We are going to restring it. I am going to treat the fingerboard, every fingerboard with some uh, mineral oil. And I'm going to check the frets. Now the owner did say he, he, he suspects there may be a high fret. If there is a high fret, we'll sort that out. I'm sure we're going to get him in under the price of an intensive setup. But end of the day, he sent it up here from Cornwall. It's a brand new guitar. He wants my expert opinion. He does think there's a high fret. So if there is, we're going to get him all sorted. Uh, but out of the box, I find no fault with this guitar. I even find the setup to be exemplary. And I mean exemplary. It is set. How oh, I set it up. If I was setting it up for a low action, it more or less, I don't think I could go much. I could go a little bit lower, but why would you want to? It's very, very comfortable to play. The, finger, the strings are very light under your fingers. It looks fantastic, and it doesn't really need that much fettling. A couple of sounds where the intonation is slightly out, uh, but apart from that, the setup really is pretty, pretty good. Uh, very impressive, and it's a standard by which other companies need to start measuring themselves. And they need to let their guitars out with a good setup because I've never had a guitar set up this well out of the factory. So uh, there you go. Back soon, guys. Okay, guys, new angle because we are going to check the level of the frets. So I've brought the camera into the guitar. Slightly askew with angle, but it's the best I can do in the space I have. So what we need to do is we need to set the neck dead straight before we check anything. And normally, if you take the strings off, the neck should be dead straight. Now this is going to have some back though in it. I can tell, why do I know? Because it had too much, not enough relief in there. Which means we're up to slacken off. I trust I've not, just a little bit. Now I'm thinking, it's probably the same size knot as a uh, PRS. Which I believe, does it have a 7mm adjuster? This type of Corbin's here, this type of key, and we're just gonna try. No, it's not 7mm. There you go then, so it will be. That's definitely not gonna be a 625, so it's gonna be a Gibson. Is it a Gibson size? Looks like it is. And a Gibson size, I believe, is 8mm. Yeah, it's a Gibson size one, so it's 8mm, same as a Gibson. Surprise there. But we're just going to just slacken off the truss rod knot just a little. And we still have some back bow in there, it means we've got a gap at the ends. It means it's bowed that way like a rainbow. So let's just keep going. Slacken it 
off. Okay. Now one thing that did look, look a bit odd to me was the, uh, the truss rod cover. And I thought, that's not very well made, but it's still got the plastic cover on there. That's why it looks a little bit skewed with a bit horrible. I'm not peeling it off, it's not for me, it's the privilege of the owner, that is. But anyway. Still have some back bow at this end. It seems to be a two-way truss rod. So if I turn it that way, it should start bending the opposite way. Okay, now we are straight. Now we have a perfectly straight, oh hang on, we've got a little bit of relief, we're a little bit too far with that, so we're gonna just adjust again, slightly this way. So it's one of these that will do one thing or the other. Let's try about there. We're looking for completely low, ha 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 ha. Okay. a tiny bit of relief. I think that that is pretty much as straight as we're going to get it. You never get a perfectly straight neck but you want to take as straight as you can. Right that is it. We've got no gaps under the notch straight edge so we are good to go with the fret locker. Now when I checked briefly before there was no rocking anywhere. Not to say there won't be any rocking at all. Any rocking at all we are going to level that fret. There's some, uh, I don't know what it is, it's next to the fret, so it's some, has this fingerboard been stained to look like ebony? Because there's some gubbins in there, I don't know what it is, but it's red. Anyway, let's get back, not straight, uh, not straight, not on a straight edge, this is a precision fret rocker. Each of these edges has been precision flattened, so it's perfectly level. We have four different lengths. The reason we have four different lengths is so we can check three frets at a time and as we come across the neck we turn it around just so we can always measure three frets and the reason we measure three frets is if one is high in relative to the two next to it it will rock so here we go starting at this end and we're listening for a rock tiny rock on fret three a little bit on four but nothing major. Right, it's quite a high bit there on fret 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, fret 9. I'm going to mark fret 9 because that's quite a bit. So fret 9 down the middle. So that one's certainly going to need attention. I will include five frets in an intensive setup, an intensive setup, a bit more intrusive than a standard setup. Okay, a little bit on fret three. Let's go check these again. A little bit on the other side of fret four. So for us, three, four, and nine need a tiny bit. Now you could leave those and get away with it, but being as we are precision leveling the frets anyway, we're not going to get away with anything. We are going to precision level. So that's four high spots. I'm still going to include all of this in a um, an intensive setup because it's that slight. There are some very slight knocks on there. I can do all this by spot leveling. So we've got five that need a very slight, or four need very slight. Okay, six. Chances are I'll be able to just tap these in with a soft mallet and they'll see better and they won't need any filing. Okay, but those frets certainly are very good, especially this end, they are fantastic. So let's just go again. I do have six with a slight rock, so listen. That 
That's fret number 14. Fret number 12. Fret number 10. Fret number 9. Quite high. Fret 4. Fret number 3. So we have six high spots, which I'm going to sort out in a moment. Now what we can do is, we can we need to make sure that these frets are actually seated correctly. So what we're going to do is we are going to support the guitar underneath. Not critical that we totally support it underneath. I'm going to see what kind of blocks I've got laying about. And I may just want to do it as it is. What's good about this one is, I can just put Off on this piece of wood here. Support it underneath like so. I can just give this fret a tap. So I'm going to be using my fretting mallet and I'm going to use the nylon side and we're just going to tap down those frets that are causing a slight problem. And we may find that the reseat is no longer rock. That was still rocking ever so slightly. So we're going to tap it down along its whole length. Because if I tap one side down, another side is probably going to pop up. That's probably what's happening on this one. It's still rocking. So we've not reseated that one. We'll do the same again with this one here. So you're seeing all of this live. I'm doing all this for the first time, including checking the frets. is now better suited but the one next to it now has come slightly unseated so we're just going to give it a tap again. My, I suspect that the frets are not glued in and I would certainly recommend gluing frets in. That one is now a little bit high. So this is always a problem. As you hammer one in, it alters the relation. If I hammer that one in, it alters the relationship between this one and these two and these two. Which is always a dilemma with a luthier or a guitar tech. You know, it's why we like to level all of them in one go. Because that way you get a complete level along the whole length of the neck. Still high, so we're still going to be filing these, just we need to check where they are. And we always support under the neck. I'm not hitting hard enough to put any dents in the neck, plus, this is all cushioned underneath anyway. Still high still high so we are still going to work the same frets it's just that we have now ascertained that they are all seated correctly so we are going to file across these frets now it's probably going to be a bit better for you lot if I do move the camera but in this case I'm not going to today I'm just going to lay the guitar I'm going to slightly change the angle of the guitar because the guitar is now seated correctly on the bench and it may now be skewed with from where you are but it's perfect for me doing the work I'm going to be doing so what I need to do is again check the frets I'm going to slightly remove the pen or most of the pen I'm going to check the ones again I know which ones I need to try to work on so what three four nine ten I'm going to remark them 3, 4, 9, 10, 12, and 14. I'm going to remark them. So, 3. I'm going to try them all again.
three, four, nine. Good. And 14 still needs a little bit of work. So we always try and reseat them first. So we don't end up filing fresh, we don't need to touch. Also needs a bit of work on the far side. So what we'll do is we'll also check the frets again in between. Just to make sure that nothing else has popped out while we've been putting some force in other areas on the neck. Normally when a fret goes in, it goes in, it's got a, uh, there are barbs on there that keep the fret in place. You don't have to glue them in, it's just, I'm surprised they don't glue them in. Well, there's nothing else popped out anyway, so we're good. So it is those six frets. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to work these frets. And I'm going to get the files I normally always use for this job. And because I'm leveling, I'm going to be using three different files. I have my Swiss made Valor file, a number four cut, Swiss made. Probably see that on there. This is such a wonderful file. It is so smooth. It's perfectly level, super smooth, but it is super sharp. And this is what I'll be using for leveling. The flat side is this side, and all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be following the fret. So I'm going to be going in the direction toward you over that way. I'm not going to be going across the frets because that will scratch them all up, and it means I'll have to level the whole lot. So this way I'm going to take my fret locker again, see where I need to work the fret. Very slightly in the middle, and I'm just going to take my file going to hold position, I'm going to put these two fingers there just so I hold it nice and steady, I'm just going to follow the radius, let the file do the work, We're just following the radius, nice and smooth, and that's as much as it's going to take, and that one's done, and once it's done I'm going to be using my profiling file, this is my my Z file, got two cuts on that side, two cuts on that side, complete opposite, at the bottom, a short, deep, uh, sharp cut. On the top, a flat, slight cut. And the complete opposite on the other side. And what this will do is, this will cut bits off the edge of the fret, but it will not touch the top of the fret, so it will rebuild that crown itself. And it's just a matter of just a few strokes. Don't need to put any tape on the board, because this will not touch the board. Another good thing about this file is it will not touch the top of the fret, so we're not going to lose any height at all. We're just going to shape the crown. And once that's done like so, there's my third file, again a diamond file, crowning file, and this just recreates that beautiful crown on the top. And we'll find that that one's done, we're, we've flattened the top just a little, we've recrowned it, and that will now be perfect. We're going to take fret rocker, just check the ones next to it, this is the one we've just done, and it's perfect. So we're going to move on to the next one, check where it's high, take file we're going to be using, clean it, give it a wipe, and again very carefully using my these two fingers just to steady, make sure I've got the flat side down, and let's just follow the radius. And we're not removing a great load of material, we're just going nice and steady, always checking the work, still a little bit high, so again Steady with the fingers, just follow around. We know we've worked it because the top bit is on a little bit wider, and there you go. And that is nice, both sides again with the two files for recreating the crown. Give them a clean, so I'll be charging for an intensive setup on this. 
because he's had prep work. That's the difference between a player setup and an intensive setup. With an intensive setup, you get the complete setup, but you also get up to five frets leveled, crowned, and polished. Well, we're all going to get polished, so you get five frets leveled and crowned, and it will include an, ele um, an electrics, not an upgrade, but a maintain maintenance on the electrics if the electrics are a little bit skew with. So there you go, that's two done. Now these frets are quite done now they've been filed. So they'll need polishing up. We'll be polishing all of the frets. That one's a little bit high now. This is a problem. When you remove material from one, you're going to end up removing material from another. So the one next to it now needs work. So this will become fret seven. So I'm now working seven frets. So I'm going to leave it in the price of a intensive setup. That's five frets. But there you go, that's done. So not a lot of work. It's one of the pitfalls of this job. If you alter one thing, it's going to affect another. But no great shades, that's taken me what 40 seconds to do that one. And we just give it a check. Check the one next to it, make sure everything's all fine. And it is. I got one, two, three, four more to do. So I one, two, three, four more to do. I'm gonna crack on, get those done off camera. Once that's done, we're gonna come back, we're gonna get these frets polished up, we're gonna treat the fingerboard. And once that's done, we can get a new set of strings on, get the guitar set up, and it will be good to go. I'll move the camera back to its original position just to show you more or less how this fret levelling shenanigans works. And I've already done fret 14, so I'm going to move on to fret 12. And I've got my files all in front of me here. I've got my fret rocker not too far away. And without really explaining much more than I've already explained, I'm just going to crack on and work. I don't need to keep repeating myself. But I may talk a little bit while I'm doing it, but I find I work better just by cracking on with it. So, I'll explain a little. Fret 12, was it? It was fret 12. I know it's a little bit high in the middle. And just a, with the same methods as you, as you saw from that angle back there, it's the same thing again. Wipe the file. Make sure you've got flat side down. Steady with these two fingers and just... I'm just following the radius and letting the file do the work. We're not removing a lot of material, we're just leveling. That feels pretty smooth, so we're going to take a fret rocker and just check. And there you go, that's as much as it took to level that fret. It's now not rocking anymore, so we can move to the next file and do exactly the same as before. Now you've just seen it from a better angle. So, this is not touching the top of the fret, just the size, just rebuilding that crown. Flip it 180 degrees. You can't see from where you are, but I can see the little filings that have flown off. And again, third file. And just, and try, just to rebuild that crown properly. And that's it. So I'm going to crack on with the last two. Fret, perfect. Check the two either side. Little high spot there now. That's because we've removed material from there. So we're going to have to work this one now. So I think that'll make it eight or nine frets we've actually worked, even though we're going to need it to work six. Like I say, one of the pitfalls, one of the problems. If you alter one thing, it's going to affect others. I prefer to do the lot in one go. It is cheaper to do it this way. I don't mind doing it this way. It just can be, it does have its pitfalls and it does make a little bit more work for the tech or the luthier. So we're just going to check that for at 13. Just a little bit higher there. So we're going to just gently tap that back. Check again if it needs more removing or removing. And that's it, we are level all the way. Just a little bit there. That's fret 14 I've already worked on. Just about getting that consistent level along the whole length of the neck. Checking 13 again. Remember where I am.
we are always playing with very, very tight margins when we're changing anything on a neck or on a guitar. It's like string balance versus spring balance on a tremolo. Slightly, slightly high now on fret 11. Like I say, we've not touched fret 11. But yeah, very fine margins. So down to 10. We have a little high spot just on that side. So again, same method. check everything on this side of the ones we've worked on to make sure that everything is right and we are there so that's great that's good news everything above fret 10 is now level it is Sunday today by the way I've never worked Sundays I never do any paid work Sundays but because this week I didn't work Saturday yesterday I'm working today. I've, I've made it. I've made it slightly different. Um, I've been doing so much overtime at Royal Mail lately. I've been working till three in the afternoon from five in the morning. I've been walking 17 miles a day. I've just been too tired to come in the workshop for the last two weeks. I've been on full overtime. I'm now off for a week. I'm going away for a few days. <clears throat> but I've got today and tomorrow free as things stand. So I'm going to work today and tomorrow in the workshop. It's great to be in here. I don't have much time to do anything guitar-wise in the workshop. I've got so many of my own guitars that also need work. I have, regarding other guitars, I so far I have 36 in the queue at the moment. I would say it's four months. If I'm carrying on doing overtime with Royal Mail, then it's going to take me four months to clear those. I've got a couple of refrets in. I've got a really nice vintage guitar in a 1972 Gibson in for a refret. That's going to be a big job. It's going to be great fun. But yeah, waiting list, gonna be, it's at least four months as it stands today. Today we are Sunday the 25th of July, July, Year of Our Lord 2021. And there's nothing I can do about that. It's just the way it is. Uh, if you're prepared to wait, that's absolutely fine. But, you know, it's what it is. Anyway, that's that for it. And that's the last one, I believe. That's fantastic. The ones next to it are all fine. Yeah, so a form of waiting list as things stand. If I can get anything done quicker, I will do, but it's just a guesstimation. I've got a short holiday booked for next week. I've also got a short holiday booked for the third week in August. So again, I'll be out of the workshop again. My wife and I have not had a holiday for five years. So I think we definitely do. Well, we're going to take that time, spend some time. My wife's now a teacher. She's been teacher training for a couple of years. She's now a fully qualified teacher. She starts her first full-time teaching job this September. And we're going to enjoy what free time we have because we're both busy people. But anyway, there you go. That's that one done. I think the frets are all now bang on. I think we're level along the whole length of the neck. And all we're going to do is polish the frets. Because these are such minimum work, we're not going to need the full seven grades of paper polish. Just some fine grade, extra fine steel wool will be enough. And that's it. The frets are level across the whole length of the neck. We've done a sterling job there. Everything is done great. So I can clean my files. A little bit of wet on there just to give them a proper clean. And to a dry bit. Same again, a little bit of wet. Move over to the dry. I will also be taking a um, steel brush to these to clean them up properly. But they're good. I always make a habit of putting my tools away. And I always try not to lift tools over a guitar. Uh, mistakes 
you to make in the past. And that way, if you have an accident, you're going to cause some damage. You're not going to be causing any damage to a £2,000 at all. I guarantee it. So, put these away. Put your designated places in the drawer. And that way, you minimise the risk of having any accidents anywhere. Again, tools, always put them away. I have three or four guitars of my own that all need work and I'm talking about some really lovely guitars. I have a Hamer, 2006 Hamer Studio, favourite guitar. I got it in a deal earlier this year and it's been away for a bit of a respray. It cost me a lot of money but it's a fabulous guitar and it's sat there with no pickups in it and no electrics in it at the moment. And I've just not played it since I've had it. I played it for the first couple of days then it went away to a workshop and I've not played it and not been able to play it since. So I want to get my guitars all up to spec, ready to play. One criticism I have with this guitar, by the way, is regarding stock top piece. And there's one of these, it doesn't lock in place. It just slides off. So when you pull your strings off, you drop, you've got the risk of it dropping and scratching your guitar. I think for £2,000, you ought to have one with springs on for these. You know, for 2000 quid. But... Just nitpick in there. Anyway, there you go. So we are more or less ready to polish with frets. Uh, now, when it comes to polishing frets, I'll be using things. Well, these are things I'm going to do, little jobs I'm going to do off camera because it is Sunday, not because it's Sunday, because I've got quite a lot to do before I go away. I'll, there's two more guitars I want to get done. And I don't need to film everything. So, we're not fret guards, we're actually fingerboard guards. We've got a fingerboard, I've got a thin one and a thick one. And this one will do this end and that one will do that end. And it means when I polish the frets, I'm not going to scratch into the fingerboard, which is I don't want to do. So what I need to do first is we're going to spray the fingerboard with some mineral oil. You know it's lemon oil, it's not lemon oil. It's mineral oil with a hint of lemon in there, just to make it smell nice. And what we're going to do is we're just going to cover the guitar itself. I don't want oil on the guitar, I just want it on the fingerboard. And there you go, on the fingerboard. I'm going to let this soak in five or ten minutes. But I can polish the frets while this is soaking in. And this is just going to treat the wood, it's not going to soften anything, it's just going to treat it. Any grime and dirt on there is going to lift off or we'll wipe it off in a short while. Just let that do its stuff. It's also going to treat the wood just that little bit. Some people argue that it doesn't need it. Let me tell you something, I've come, come across enough brittle fretboards over the years because they've not been treated with mineral oil once, twice a year. And I always recommend every six months that they're just dry and cracked. And wood will try and warp, it will dry out and warp. So this is not going to harm it. It's just going to keep a little bit of moisture in there. It's not going to make it do anything it doesn't want to do or shouldn't do. And if anything, if nothing else, it makes it look fantastic. So we're going to let that do its thing, and while that's doing its thing, just a tiny bit of oil on my fingers, just to put on the top of the uh, pickups there, and that will remove any crap on there, any dirt or anything, any old scowl, any dust, any grime, and they'll look fantastic. And what we need to do is, because I'm going to be using steel wood in a second, We don't want any of that getting in the pickups. Now I know these are active pickups and they look totally different to passive pickups. Still don't want to risk getting anything in there. So we're going to cover the pickups, seal those, because we don't want any iron filings or steel wool filings getting in anywhere that it doesn't need to be. So I'm going to cover the pickups. And that way, I'll polish the pickups risk free. There you go, and we have some steel wool I used before. This is extra fine steel wool grade 0000. zero, zero, zero. And all we need to do with the frets is put a fret guard on there or a fingerboard guard on there. Take the steel wool and straight across and over. And that's as difficult as it is. Really, really easy. We're not going to scratch into the wood on the fingerboard, but we're going to remove all the grime and bring these frets to a lovely, lovely shine. 
knowing now that these frets are all level and crowned as well, this guitar is going to play like an absolute dream. It means we can play with a nice lower action or set a nice lower action, even lower than it when it came in, which was low anyway. But you know, you don't take the mickey with it. I'm going to set a nice medium to low action on the guitar. So what I do is I put some strings on and we'll check where it is with the truss rod as it is. And what we'll do is I'll straighten the truss rod, keep straightening it until it starts buzzing, then I'll loosen it again until it's not buzzing and that will set the action. And I imagine we're going to get down to about one and a half millimetres on the bass side, which is fantastic. So this is me doing my thing. I always show everything on a setup. But I do like to work more or less in a live environment. It means that you're getting to see all the work done. I don't edit the videos. I just get the bits and glue them together. I'm not into video editing or anything. These are just for my records and for clients' records, really. You know, some people slag them off now and again. But these are not for the general public. These videos are just for me and the client. Just something that the general public seem to enjoy watching them. So I'm going to move to the thicker one now. And there you go. And what we're doing is fingerboard's protected. We're not scratching the wood, but we are polishing the frets. Now, once I've ordered fingerboard and used a steel wool, I won't use it again. But it's got oil in there, so I'll discard this. But there you go. Lots of frets levelled, recrowned, and polished, or those that needed levelling. I dare say this guitar had played well enough without levelling the frets, but there was one particularly high, fret 8 or fret 10, I don't remember which one it was exactly. Or was it fret 12? It's always worth checking. Shouldn't need to be done on a brand new guitar, but that said, the setup of this guitar, out of the fact, was really, really good. We've got one slightly high fret and five some very slightly high spots. But there you go, that is the frets polished. They are done. Put these back in the bag, get these back in the drawer. Put the tools away. We'll have no filings in the pickups anywhere because we've covered the pickups with tape and now we're just going to wipe off the majority of the oil. Any muck, grime, sweat stuck in there will now transfer to the cloth. Yeah, nothing major, just a little bit of dirt there. The nut doesn't need touching. The nut slots are absolutely fine. We are going to put a new set of strings on here. So, total price, set up for its level, guitar all done. It's going to be 85 quid with strings. I only charge five pounds for strings. I pay, I pay just about five quid for a set of strings. Sometimes a few pennies more than five quid, but I charge five quid. Dear Dario's, I'll buy Dear Dario's or uh, Ernie Balls. Uh, kids are outside making a bit of noise, that's fine. They'll live around here, we're allowed. But there you go, that's the frets and fingerboard done. Can remove the tape, if we can use that again, I will do. That bit I can't use again, is that it? Is that it? So there you go, so I'm going to get the strings on, get the guitar set up and I will come back because the kids are outside, I'll wait till they've gone, I'll come back, we'll finalise this video. We are all finished and this guitar is stunning. ESP E2 Eclipse, made in Japan in a, I can't remember the finish, something I just need to do which I've not checked before, or I had checked but I haven't done is just raise the pickups to where they want to be. What is I hold it down at the last fret and I just bring up to within about two millimeters. 
Well, two two millimeters on the treble side, three millimeters on the bass side, just like so. A little bit close on this one. I've had this plugged in. I've played it. It plays. It sounds fantastic. Well, it looks fantastic. It sounds fantastic. Here's a really really nice guitar. Um, and for £1,900, £1,900, you'd expect it to be a really nice guitar, and it is. And it came in and it didn't really need any. The setup out of a shop was fantastic, it needed a little tiny bit of tweaking. Uh, the frets, you'd have got away with them, not a problem. They were level enough. There was one slightly high fret and five high, very slightly high spots, which I've leveled, uh, leveled, recrowned, and polished. Uh, I've also set the guitar up. Nice low action. 1.6 on the bass side, 1.4 on the treble side, that's a high to above the 12 fret. Relief wise, 0.15 millimeters at the seven fret, so not a lot of relief, more or less nice and straight. We're nice and low above the uh, first fret, so the nut was cut really, really nice. It is a bow nut, it's fantastic, and probably one of the best factory setup guitars I've ever had in. A stunning thing. Um, I've charged for the price of the strings, 5 quid and 80 quid for an intensive setup because of the fret work. At the end of the day, you may as well get it precision leveled, even though you might have got away with it. In time, you'd have noticed that one high fret giving you a little buzz. The owner did say he's getting a little bit of buzz, so get it done for a cost of 80, for the price of, you know, 85 quid job done with new strings. You're getting a professional setup, lovely guitar, and it's all ready to go. So, one thing left. For me to do much to remind you my website fretfriend.co.uk even better facebook is where most of my information is facebook.com forward slash ng17 that's facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n i am victor i am your fret friend and until the next time as always god bless you be good to each other and i'll see you in the next one